Are you ready? Yeah! I want to know, is everybody ready? Yeah! All right, here we go. Hina! Yeah! 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 <laughs> Bobby back from a difference is doing it. And look, it has been way too long since we have been back with another episode of Other Basement Distires. <laughs> What'd you think of that, right? My fancy graphics now? Watch, I'll do it again. Other Basement Distires. <laughs> I love it. My man, my man Josh from over at Apocalypse Distires, he made that for us. Um, you know, I think he might have been the last guest we had on Other Basement Destire. <laughs> okay, that's the last time. But, like, you know, he was the one who was showing us all, like, the super fancy computer stuff, like he did with that thing there, to help us do, like, crazy detailed graphics and, and stencils and all that kind of... Look, if you missed it, I'll throw the link up there, there, wherever it goes, because it was dope, and you want to catch, <laughs> want to catch it. This time, today, we are going to be turning our attention over to one of the fair members of the TDD Army in the stylings and skills of the lovely Miss Kateri. Which, I mean, it, like if you, if, you, if you pine over plastic in the same circles that the rest of us distires to, you're probably more familiar with her by her screen name. Like, <laughs> that's how we all know each other. Which is, this is how I die. We are super lucky to have her on the channel because she is a rock star like if you do spin in those circles that i was talking about like just saying that her name this is how i die i'm sure it's brought up pictures in your mind's eye already but like for the rest of you that have a real life um i'll, <laughs> I'll start i'll start some pictures of her work going here under the fancy microphone her stuff is the hotness and she has definitely etched out a style that is all her own. Like, you don't see stuff like this from everybody. It's just, it's it's hers. It's all hers. And like I said, we are super lucky that she has decided to hop on other basement disc diaries <laughs> and share it with the rest of us. All right, let's talk about, like, this tutorial here for a quick minute before we roll this sucker because this bad boy is a beast. I mean, it is a beast. <laughs> there is... So much good stuff packed into this sucker. I'm not gonna, this could have easily been an hour and a half or longer. It wasn't easy cutting it down into the 40 minutes or so that I got it down to. But like what I'm trying to say is it is chuck full of the good stuff that all you kids come here for. Now, the main focus of the tutorial is texturing, okay? Like you saw in all those crazy pictures of her work rolling by there. Like she is the texturing Masta. And here's the thing. She went full commentary style on this for us. So, like, she's going to be talking you through all of the steps and secrets along the way that, like, it's going to be more than enough to keep you busy trying to master this thing <laughs> for months. All right. Now, like, I don't want to get too deep into this without, like, right up front sending a collective and huge T D D Army thank you out to Kateri, like from all of us. So Kateri, thank you. You are a rock star. But like, like, I, don't let that serve as your thank you, okay? I still feel like all of you out there should be showing her some T Diddy love. So I'll throw her information up at the end of the video. It's gonna be linked in the description down below so you can reach out and let her know. Because listen, here's what I'm gonna say. This stuff isn't easy, okay? It's not easy. There's always like a camera that didn't turn on or a battery that died or the volume didn't record or the stupid plastics rejecting the die. Like it is always something. It's always something. Like poor Katari, she hit every one of those hurdles along the way trying to put this footage together for us. But like, like a real trooper just mm, powered through it for, for no other reason than rising the tide for all of us. So I'll throw out that thank you from all of us, but like you really should let her know. <laughs> this girl did it for us. All right, one last bit of housekeeping before we get on to the good stuff. Listen, here's how Kateri got on to other basement distires. 
I had to do it one more time. Like, it was one of you nutbags, all right? Like, one, one of you fools out there in the T Diddy army was scrolling through and saw her stuff and thought it was awesome and was like, yo, Kateri, you should do this. And yo, Bobby, you should hook up with her. And then, bang! That's how that stuff happens. Why, am, why is this important to tell you guys? Okay, because peer pressure works. <laughs> It works. So when you're just like scrolling aimlessly later on, and then you see one of those artists that makes you just be like, Damn! Like, start poking at him. Start, start poking at him. And let's see if we can like do it again. We'll try to, and we'll try to get like another awesome artist on other basement disc tires. Or maybe you're one of those artists, okay? Consider this that poking. This is me poking at you like I got a couple other really good ones in the pipeline they're gonna be coming soon but we're trying to stuff that sucker full all right that's enough of all the blah 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 crap it is time to get on to the good stuff without further ado this is the lovely Miss Kateri teaching texturing to the T Diddy army yeah keep doing it all right, so I think I'm ready to get started here. I have my disc that I've already cleaned off. This is a Innovastar Daedalus. This is my design. I found this on Etsy. I'm doing a cow because I'm from Wisconsin and why not? And there's a bunch of pretty flowers that I can color in with a lot of nice colors. So, And then I usually take this and kind of color everything out. So I know for one thing, it kind of helps weeding in between these weird areas to know what you're pulling. And then when I need to go get all these colors and stuff, I have a nice little list to work with. So now that I've got my whole list of all my colors and stuff that I need, I have all of my hand painting mediums right here. Um, a lot of people use lotion. I actually like using laundry detergent. You get really nice color saturation. It's pretty easy to paint with as long as you use a high quality laundry detergent. If you buy the real cheap stuff that's really runny, I guess mostly I buy Tide. Uh, the color really doesn't matter, just if you buy, you know, one that's blue, you're not gonna like see like a real good color representation, but it'll turn out. Most of these for these small four ounce stars is quarter teaspoon of dye. Um, I mainly use eye dye poly and pro chemical and dye. So a quarter teaspoon of dye and then just fill this little thing up with the detergent. So yeah, that's what I use for all my painting and then I do a regular hot dip. I have already printed this out or cut this out on my Cricut. I have a Cricut Explore Air 2. I had a recent discovery actually that my boyfriend made. If you have problems with all these little pieces lifting up and stuff. The last time I did a stencil like this, there was a lot of lifted up pieces, but on this different setting, and I've been having a lot less of that kind of issue. What you do is you set your dial to custom, and then uh, you go through, and if you choose washi tape, and then send it through, you don't get nearly as many little pieces lifting up everywhere that you have to do surgery on and put it back on. I'm going to try and show how I center a disc. Sometimes it works perfectly and sometimes it's not so perfect. So what I do is, first of all, on this sheet, this little red dot right here, when I have the file on my computer, I find where exactly the mathematical center is and I note that. So I'm going to kind of match it up where it is on that sheet, where it is on here, and put a little dot. And then I usually go and I find the lowest point, the furthest right point, the furthest left point, and then the topmost point of the stencil. So then I've got my points here, I've got my disc, I'm going to flip it and so I'm just going to center over that little dot, so my dot's right in the center here. I'm going to take my sharpie again and go around the outside. And now I can see how centered. It really is. That's pretty good. And I'm just gonna do this. This is top and this is bottom. This is the kind of transfer tape I use. It's on Amazon. So I'm going to cut out roughly the same size here. About there.
So I just have kind of a rough circle. As long as it covers this image out to these outer edges, it should be fine because my image isn't going anywhere near the uh, rim of the disc. All right, so, well, actually I'm gonna trim this a little bit too. So I try to go fairly close to where the edge of this is, enough that it wraps around a little bit, but isn't like a whole bunch of extra stuff hanging around on the back. So, the top bottom, a little circle here, make sure it covers where these lines are, where I marked the top, bottom, left, right most areas. Pull this off. Make sure you're kind of lined up, but only put it down like as close to me as possible. And then as I'm rolling it down over the image, I'm pushing down with my little squeegee here. And then I'm going to pull, pull the backing from the front of the vinyl rather than the other way around. I don't have anything stuck to here to worry about. If anything does get stick on, stuck on here, uh, you can use your weeding tool and kind of pull it and stick it back in there if it's a necessary piece. So finding my top and bottom again, kind of try to line it up and try to plop it down exactly where that uh, center is. Part of the reason I do the outside lines here is you can kind of use that to get in the general vicinity. Line her up, looking for my dot. And I'm right on the dot. Put her over. That looks pretty good. I'm gonna take my squeegee again. I'm gonna go from center to the outside and push all these air bubbles out. So that looks pretty good. I'll wrap these edges around as tightly as possible. that and then so I got a good grip on it and just try to keep it taut but just nice and steady and I'm pulling pretty firmly and, -da! and then I can go through and this is actually pretty nice there's not a, a ton of air bubbles uh, this one in the center here I'll push out a little bit I'll go through and push some of those out before I do my weeding and start my hot dip. So before I start weeding, I have my little printout sheet that just kind of helps to make sure I'm pulling all the right areas. All these little pieces, this center piece of the eye, I want to keep that white so I kind of push through the top where I want this other little dot to stay. Just leave it on there and reposition it if you need to. And with Movie Magic, we're back. Got all my black weeded out. Just gonna look nice and close, make sure I didn't forget anything. It looks good over the light. And I'll go around and see if there's any air bubbles that are close to the edges of where these lines are. There's that one in the middle I was talking about. And try and push that out. Alright, and that looks good to me. And I think we're ready for our black hot dip. So I've got my disc, not a lot of bubbles, ready to do our hot dip. So what you're waiting for is just barely, barely, barely any like wisps of steam off the top of this. If you start seeing bubbles, that's not really great because that can cause air bubbles and it's just not good for your hot dip dye mixture. So yep, turning it off and it'll wisp up a little bit more, but that's probably a good temperature. And this has kind of a dome top. This you just kind of roll it in I go with like the edge furthest away from me and kind of set it down super gently so we don't get any black dye on the back. And for this disc with Star Innova, um, I'm going to set a timer. It's another good tip. Always, always, always set a timer and 
check it every two minutes or so and make sure I don't have any air bubbles underneath and kind of just check how the color is going. And another good reason to do that is I've been getting a lot of good grays out of black at different times. A good gray is kind of a hard color to get, so I guess this can be a test of what two minutes of eye dye black does. Alright, so that's been two minutes. That's like a very, very, very light gray. We're at eight minutes now, so I'll put it back in and check it in another two minutes. All right, so this is gonna be after four minutes. That's after six minutes. Still not, you know, a uh, super light or super dark gray, but a nice gray. And that's after six minutes. And now let's look at about eight minutes in. A nice dark gray. I can already tell I'm gonna need more than two minutes. I haven't had any ear bubbles. I'm going to reset my timer for judging by that darkness. I'm gonna call it another eight minutes to check on it. So now we can do the actual fun part, all the little hand painting and stuff. I have my little colored sheet right next to me just to keep track of what I'm doing so I don't forget any of these little flowers. So I'm gonna reference that and when I do my hand painting, especially because I try to do a lot of shading and just different things, you wanna do your lightest colors first and then build on top of that when it, with any of the textures or shadings that you want to do. However, as far as even an order of operations kind of thing, I'm going to do all this hand painting stuff and the flowers and stuff first, and then I'm going to mask off this area. Then I think I'll do the background of the red wood, and then I can kind of cut around the cow and all the flowers and stuff here and do the background of this area. I'm going to start with the dark purple flowers, which I wanted to do with a Pro Chemical and Dye Iris. It's a really pretty dark purple color. If you don't mix it up, it does kind of a cool fading from pink to purple effect. Like I said earlier, I use a tiny, tiny bit of heat. I'm going to put it on warm and let it barely, barely get warm, turn it off, and then put this disc in the oven for, I'll call it, you know, five minutes, rinse it off, and check what kind of color I got out of that. And if it's not dark enough, you can repaint over it. You can keep layering on, and again, doing the different effects with the different layering and stuff. And by adding a tiny, tiny, tiny bit of heat, get some cool effects and color saturation. And I'll go in and paint this iris again. Usually I would mix this up before I did it, but I like the way this color tends to turn out when I don't mix it up. So yeah, with a toothpick, like barely dip it in, especially with the tiny ones. So there's all my purple. I'm gonna go check the temperature of the oven. I'll do that, and like I said, I'm gonna try, once it's at a good temperature, five minutes on the Pro Chemical and Dye Iris. All right, so took this out of that barely warm oven. There's some different shades of purple in there. I like it, so I'm gonna move on to the next color. Next is going to be our green on the leaves. I'm going to start with Pro Chemical and Dye Meadow, and then I can build on with other types of greens and stuff after that if I want to. I've had a lot of experimentation with green. My tester disc, this is from <laughs> even back when I first started out, there's a lot of different greens, and all these X'd out because they weren't the right green for what I wanted it for, and I added more of whatever to it, so... It's nice to have tester discs and just make a mess like this and then you can move on to the back and just test out different times to see what kind of color you get, especially if you're trying to do custom mixes of colors. The Pro Chemical and Dye 
dies are pretty awesome, but they settle at the bottom of these jars pretty heavily. They settle down at the bottom. I like using these like, you know, cheap popsicle craft sticks from dollar stores or whatever to stir with until the color kind of starts lifting from the bottom. So just make sure you mix it well. I think I can use a paintbrush for this for the green. I'm still conscious of, again, how I said the brush strokes can show up. So you just kind of go within the shape of the, you know, whatever you're painting. Meadow, my green on the leaves. I'm gonna give this a little bit more time. I will take this, my first layer of green, put it in the oven. I'm gonna do this for, I'm gonna do it for a full 15 minutes and then come back and rinse it off and check. So this is after about 15 minutes in the oven with the meadow. Kind of hard to see, but there's a lot of different color variations already just from the different brush strokes I did. I'm gonna go back in with some dark green. But I'm only gonna do that up at the tops and kind of push it down. Again, just staying with the, the shape of the leaves and just the kind of lines that are existing right here. Put it in there for a good five minutes and check it out again. So this is after the dark green was on for about five minutes. I'm, again, getting good gradation and stuff in there. I'm still gonna go just kind of on the tippy tops again. So it's another slightly different variation of green. I'm gonna do another layer of the dark green and then I will continue this. This is my second coat of green. There's different brush strokes in there to try and get some different texture. So that's what I'm putting back in for five minutes. All right, this is about five more minutes with that dark green. I just want to look at it in better light and reassess it, but I'm getting some good color changes in here and stuff. I guess next of, not really going by order of operations here, but I'm going to do the yellow next because I'm going to do kind of a base on the lilies with the yellow before I do the orange and red on top of that. Looks like everything I want yellow. I have my golden yellow mixed with detergent. I'm gonna mix this one up pretty good. I use kind of different things to do this painting. When I do these kind of circle frames, it's kind of nice to use an eyedropper. I'm still gonna save that for last so I don't end up dipping my arm in it while I'm painting this stuff. And then I pretty much, I'm barely even squeezing. So this is 20 minutes in the barely warm oven. It's a decent yellow. I'm gonna go over every single one of these areas with a different color so it doesn't need to be super super dark because I'm gonna build layers off of it. So next I'm gonna go in with the orange. It's technically a fluorescent orange. I mixed a little bit of fluorescent yellow I had and it just gets like a nice tangerine kind of orange. So I think we're good on the orange. So I'm gonna put this in for 10 minutes. So 10 minutes of the fluorescent yellow mixed with clear orange. It's kind of a really, really 
light tangerine color. And you can see where I have the yellow underneath, how it got a little darker. Now, on the next step, I am gonna use just a straight orange, Pro Chemical and Dye Orange. I kind of go around the outside and darken it up a little bit more. See all that dye rising to the top once you mix it. There's our clear orange on the lilies. And let me look how that area turned out. So I'm gonna pull it out a little more. There. All right, six minutes. Give her a rinse and check it out. So that's with the clear orange on top of it. It's not a huge difference. I feel like I can probably see it a little bit more. I did grab my eye dye orange in case I want to go over that, I feel like that might be a little bit bright of an orange, but like the comparison just in the jar, this is the clear orange is so much brighter. But like I said, I'm gonna do my red around the edges of the lilies before I decide what I want to do with the orange. Um, I'm using eye dye red. I grab another brush to kind of keep dry if I need to pull it out a little more. This one right here so I can lighten it up a little bit essentially. That's with the eye dye red kind of painted around. I'm gonna put that in for four minutes, rinse it off, and give it a whirl. That's with the red on. It turned out really cool. It has a nice kind of, you know, gradient effect to it. It kind of looks like it's glowing. It just looks cool, and that's with what? We had a little bit of yellow, the fluorescent orange plus yellow, clear orange, and then some red on top of it. Each, I mean, done within kind of a few minutes. It's a cool effect. I think I'm going to do some of my black detail and let it sit for a little bit because you want it to get black black. I think that's enough if I'm going to do dots actually. So yeah, again, super fine. Don't want a huge drop on there, probably can't even see that. It's like barely moistened by the uh, medium. If you have a big glob, you're gonna have big globby dots. If you have a tiny bit, you can do tiny little dots like that. And I'm gonna go pretty much until this is dry. Just kind of putting them all over. Sometimes I do finger paint, sort of. It's too harsh of a line, sometimes it's easier to just do that. Alright, so we got my little black details and stuff in there. Like I said, the oven is plenty warm right now. I'm going to leave it for a good 15 minutes to make sure that it gets black black because if it kind of smudges to that weird gray, it's not going to be the same effect. So this is after, what did I say, 12-15 minutes in the oven. We got nice little black dots and everything and that's rinsed off. It's nice and black. So I'm going to go back in and repaint my iris flowers. I think I'm just going to do those. Another five minutes, just so it's a little bit of a darker purple. So I'm going to do this, and then I'm going to go over uh, my yellow rim and shade in the horn a little bit. 
with a gold color. Alright, so there's my flowers. For the horn, I'm gonna use a paintbrush with the gold. So that's got like kind of a nice texture. And then what I'm gonna do for around the rim is I'm gonna start um, sponge painting. So I just have a super simple craft sponge. This one's kind of old. I've been trying to find other ones like this and I've looked around, especially on Amazon and at craft stores, and they either have the natural sea sponges, which I think the holes are a little too big on and it wouldn't do the same effect. Or they have ones with like super tiny, not even really holes. I have one. Um, it's some kind of weird synthetic thing. I got like a big pack of these on Amazon so I didn't have to keep rinsing out a sponge, but it doesn't really do the same effect. But these ones with the bigger holes are cooler to kind of spread out and have more of a texture effect. So I'm going to take my sponge Put it in here. You, you want to get, you know, get the sponge wet, but don't soak it. If you soak it, it's going to leave um, too big of paint marks. I'm doing this tiny ring right now, so I really don't need much on it. And then I'm just going to constantly go around the rim and just keep an eye on it until it's the texture that I want. If you put too much on, you just kind of roll the, the sponge and keep sponging with the dry area of the sponge and it kind of lifts that up as you go around. All right, so now where there's some of these bigger, darker spots, I'm just gonna keep going around and spreading those out so it's more of a lighter, I don't know. The first time I tried this, I was trying to get a sandstone effect. So kind of that. So that's our Pro Chemical and Dye Iris, the little bit of gold on the horn, and sponge painted gold around the rim here, going in the oven for five minutes, and take that out and give it a rinse and see how it turns out. This is after our five minutes. I think this is pretty good for right now. Um, you know, it, it kind of gives a shine and illusion, I guess, of being kind of metallic and you know there's a little bit more of shading and detail in by the horn. I'm gonna move on to the roses now. Looks like I got everything. Here's my bright red plus fuchsia. I think I will use a brush for this just for a little bit more texture. said I'll try that. What did I say? Eight minutes. So what we got was a pretty hot pink. I don't really want pink. I don't want to go super dark, but I'm still going to go over with the red and leave some of the pink in there just so there's varying colors going on. little bit of eye dye red on top of those two pink for me roses. You can still see a little bit of pink behind there. I'm gonna pop this in the oven for maybe four minutes and then I'll move on to the next layer. Here is after rinsing off that eye dye red. It's actually a really nice color right now that complements the different colors that I got going on here. I'm just gonna put a little bit of crimson detailing in there. I think that's enough. It's a little bits and pieces of darker red with some texture on there. So we'll throw that in. Next day looks pretty good. So what I'm going to do is just remove everything now and then I'm going to remask it to cover up everything I just painted uh, before I do any of the background stuff.
These spray bottles of Goo Gone are kind of nice. You always want to make sure you give it a really good rinse and wash kind of after you use Goo Gone. If you, there's residuals left on here, it's kind of oily and it'll make your dye bleed a little bit when you move on to the next color. So yep, nice and clean. I will go wash that off. Now that I've got that all cleaned off, I can tell it's a teensy bit off center, but I'm okay with that. I'll try and camouflage it a little bit with the backgrounds. So. Since I'm doing the hot dip, I'm going to do a vinyl mask on this. Now, at this point, since I'm masking this, I'm going to be doing things. It's going to remove a tiny bit of dye when I pull it off again. So these little bubbles in here mean that all these areas that don't have bubbles, it's going to pull more than where the bubbles are. So it is noticeable. Alright, so I'm going to go around my uh, gold circle just to mask off this whole area. So there's my masked disc, and then I'm going to move on to our red hop tip. So that was probably in the red hot dip for 10 minutes. So now I'm going to do my wood streaks, how I do that. So as far as doing a wood grain effect, it's really hard to just sit and get perfect little brush strokes. This is a really, really easy way to get cool wood grain effects. If I was doing this on a lighter color, I might use brown or a mix of brown and black, but on the red, I'm going to use black, so I am, again, barely dipping that in there. I'm going to barely be pushing on here. I'm going to go vertically across the image and just drag this down until I get some streaks in the red, and then just keep pulling down. Keep going over the areas a couple of times if there's big globs and add more as you need it. I'm going to do a couple layers of this so I have different variations of the green. That looks pretty good to me. I'm gonna put that in that barely warm because I just turned it on oven for two minutes. Give it a rinse, see if anything shows through. But the more you heat it up when you do this kind of effect, the more the dye is gonna spread out a little bit and you're not gonna get the same wood grain kind of effect. So we'll try this for two minutes and rinse it off and then take another look. All right, so this is after two minutes in the oven. So you can see there's some nice streaking going around all around. I still want some darker spots, so I'm gonna go and do the same exact thing and maybe spread them apart a little bit more. Just keep gently pulling straight down. You can add a little bit of a wiggle if you want. I kind of like it with just quote unquote straight because, you know, human error. So that's going to go back in the warm oven for two minutes, and I think that might be good after that. We've got some sort of weird thing going around on that edge. Not really sure what that's from, but I'm going to keep going. So yeah, there's some more, and now I'm just going to do a couple of darker ones. And then, after I do this, I'm going to let it sit for a little bit before I really decide if I want to do any more because that black sometimes, as it sits, gets darker and darker. Another two minutes and we'll see what we got. So that's after letting it sit for a little bit. It's looking like a pretty good color. I'm just going to darken the outside rim a little bit and I might add a couple of darker streaks throughout with a paintbrush too. 
I'm gonna grab this very long paintbrush so I can just kind of drag it down just to have some more separation. We'll call it like board separations. All right, and then for the edges, I'm dipping that in again and I kind of go around the edge of it. Kind of creates a frame a little bit and adds to the 3D effect. Just kind of constantly sponging around the edge, making sure I'm kind of not getting too much on the top. And then if I do, I'm just making sure it's kind of even all the way around. So yeah, it's a little darker on the edges. We've got a couple little stripes. I'm gonna throw that in for a minute and check it out. So this is pretty subtle. You can barely see it on camera. There's a good area where you can see it a little bit. I'm gonna keep it subtle because I don't want it to get too dark. I'm gonna do the mask on the cow now. This off. Get that little piece out. All right, so then my cow is masked off. I'm gonna grab my glue and just paint around the edge of this. I always add more if needed and just go around Making sure I cover the gold, but trying not to get any on the white. So yep, got my glue on there. Let that dry for a little bit and then go back to doing my little inside background area. My glue is dry and I think I'm going to differ from my drawing here. I don't really want blue after seeing how this nice dark red turned out. I'm going to do some gold and browns and then I might add some of this. Um, I have a mix that's crimson and brown. But again, I'm going to start with the lightest color first. So I'm grabbing gold. I have my big sponge again, and I'm just gonna kind of go through and keep going around. So it adds, it's gonna, this first layer usually adds a little bit more of a base. And this can be kind of a nice subtle background. Now this is what I was saying earlier, these big kind of gloopy marks. Those will show up depending on how long you're heating it for, so just keep pushing those around because that texture will show through. And then I just switched over to a dry edge of this to spread it out more. Seven minutes and see how that comes out and build up on my next layer. Well, I have definitely got something funky going on with this disc. There's more of these weird smeary areas that were showing up in the red. I couldn't see anything on the white like that. But I'm still gonna finish this darn thing up. I'm not even gonna bother with a glue mask right now. If I get any on the outside, this kind of matched that. I'll kind of just wipe it off if I get it on the red. But I'm going to go back in with brown now. I'm going a little bit more sporadic with my next darkest color so that gold color shines through or shows through. Since I'm going to do this at about the same time, I'll kind of touch up those areas where the gold didn't really show through. Kind of trying to stipple with this a little bit where I already went over now just so it's not super hard lines and it matches a little bit more how I did the sponge. It's 
So let's go back in with that one. So I'm thinking I'm not going to be able to do much to camouflage these weird areas of plastic that just aren't taking anything. But if you pay attention to the good areas, see how it's, it looks like sand. That's the effect I'm going for. I don't know what is up with all this stuff. Very weird. I think I'm going to leave that as is and try to do any detailing in here that I can. I mean, this kind of stuff all really bothers me, but other than that, it looks kind of nice. I would have probably done another layer in here so it didn't uh, melt together with the gold ring I did so much, but I'm just gonna go back and add a little bit of shading with black. Shouldn't need any heat for the amount of shading I'm talking about doing. And again, just kind of going around where some of these curves and stuff are to add a little bit of shading. It doesn't need to be on white for very long in order to get some shading. It's only been a couple of seconds. I'm gonna give it a rinse. Very, very subtle. You can barely see that, but I'll go over again a little bit in some areas and leave some areas lighter like that. I'll start in a different spot than I did the last time. I'll do all the way around the outside too, but I don't want to leave it on the white for too, too long. And we'll give that a rinse right away. So we got a little bit more. You can see it kind of up in here. There's stuff going on in here. It's very light. Pretty much following the outside of the stencil. Alright, so that's what my shadow painted on. I'll leave that on for about a minute and then rinse it off. And then I think we'll be done. So here's the final result, as good as it could get because of that funky plastic stuff going on. Very shiny at least. See all the detail around the edges. There she be. Oh. Heartbreaker! Uh.